Good morning. morning. Takes me just a second once in a while. I've been on this kick lately about the purpose of the church, reaching the lost, chasing the one, and not making a club for the 99. We're not going to be a 99 click. I'm all for meeting your needs and everything, but we can do that all week long on Sunday morning for an hour. We have a purpose. It's to make people feel welcomed and loved. Let them know somebody cares. Get in a little teaching, pray, worship, break bread together, or cookies in this case. Sometimes we splurge and have some cupcakes. Those are really good days. But you understand what the function of the church is, right? We can change the format. Our music's a little little faster and a little more, I think, exciting. Function of the church never changes. And we should be trying to reach the one, reach the lost. And I've been on a kick, and I'm going to continue it today. If you don't want to hear it, eh, better shop. I hammer people, right? Um, don't we all want what we want right now? I, I'm like this too. Last week I made this confession and I got emails. Don't just stop the emails. I, I want what I want. And I want it right now. In fact, I want everything right now. What if, what if everything you ever wanted happened right now? Now, I don't know what you guys all pray for, but let's, let's go through some of them. Like, you know, set aside the cars and the boats and the motorcycles. Uh, peace. Love. You want that right now? You want to prosper? That's not actually money. That means to succeed. But you want wealth. What if it all happened right here, right now? Boom, it just dropped on you. You are good from now on. Would you really need God? Would you still worship him? You've got everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the prodigal son. And everybody's talked about this to death. But I'm going to twist it a little bit for you. (laughs) Prodigal son, the prodigal son um, goes to his father. You guys all know this story, right? Okay, so he goes to his father and says, I want my inheritance right now. And the father does it. He gives it to him, and he takes off. Would you guys be like that? Everything, this would be everything you ever wanted. Obviously, they were wealthy, and I'm not going to dissect all this for you, but obviously, they were very well off, and he wanted his inheritance now. And he gives it to him, and he takes off on him. And, of course, most of you probably know this story. But anyway, this this son wanted everything, and I want it now. And the father said, okay. And he bails on him. Would you be that way? Would you still worship the father and hang around? See, the other son hung around, right? Let's take a look at some of this stuff. Put up uh, Luke 15, 11 through 13, will you? And I'm sure all of you probably know this. And then Jesus said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my portion of goods that falls on me. So he divided to them, remember that, to them. Both of them got their share. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, bailed on the dad after he got what he wanted. And, you know, we kind of find ourselves doing this. Now, you guys are probably all better than I am, but um, you pray for things that you want, and you want it now. You're not, you're not good with God's timing. And this, this son really couldn't wait until his dad passed away. He wanted it now. And he bails on dad. Would you be like that? If God said, boom, everything you wanted, Anything you ask for in my name, I'll give to you. Would you come to church? Would you read your Bible? Would you worship him? Or maybe you wouldn't have to anymore. 
That's what this kid did. I call him a kid. It says son, right? So many people have taken this lesson and, and changed it in so many different ways. And I've heard this taught over and over. And you know, they're, they're all truths. Let, let's take the one where they said, well, if you spent your money right, you wouldn't have to come back. You, you know, you wouldn't have to come back dragging on your hands and knees. Great lesson, but that's not the point. Right? If you want to teach it that way, it, it's a truth. If you manage your money well, you won't have to come crawling back to daddy. But that's not what it's about. And, uh, you know, you could say, well, if you wait long enough, you'll get what you have coming to you. Okay. I would assume to me that means eternal life. But to some of you that maybe are in a family like that, you'll get your share at the given time when it's right. But we want them now. How are you guys doing? Can you be good with God's timing? You know what gets me is God's always watching. And I think we can take this story too and look at it in a little different way. The father gave the son everything he wanted and he takes off. Do you think that father stood there and watched for him day after day after day to come home? I've taught this, or heard this taught this way before. And God is always watching like a good parent. A good parent watches their children. And some of you have probably had your kids, uh, whatever the scenario is, maybe they pack up and go to college, or I've got an oldest daughter that's out in Manhattan. I mean, this is just strange to me, but you watch them. You, you want to make sure they're doing it right. You want what you want for them. And you watch. And God watches too. And I want to take this back so far, nobody really thinks about this. God creates Adam, and he creates everything, and he's bringing the animals to him, and he's naming the animals. And God saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone. God was watching. Adam didn't ask for a wife. He didn't pray for one. But God saw what he needed. God is watching. Just like a good parent, father, mother, guardian, steps, great aunts and uncles. I mean, we want the best for our children and we watch. And I, I use this analogy all the time. The kids are all playing in the backyard and you're standing at the kitchen window watching them. You want to, you want to know what they're doing, right? And if they're not doing it right, do you want to correct them or do you let them fall out of the tree and then they'll learn their lesson? But you're watching all the time. You think... The father was watching for his son. You know, we have the we have the opportunity now to use Facebook and stuff. Don't, don't they call these creepers? You know, we can creep on our kids. What are they doing? Yeah, read the, read the comments and who their friends are. We're watching. We're watching. We want to make sure everything's right. They got everything they want. They don't really need anything from mom or dad. But we're watching. And God's watching too. And this father watched his son. You can bet on it. Now, maybe he had, well, we know he had servants. Maybe he sent out somebody. What's he doing? How do we know in this story that he squanders all of his money and he goes with, uh, I'll try to use the right word here, harlots. I'm trying to keep this G. How, how would he know these things unless he was creeping on them? Parents, Watch. And God watches us too. Now this kid, son, went from having everything to being what's called fatherless. He walked away from his father. And fatherless back in that culture was bad, real bad. But this kid chose fatherless. He got everything he wanted. He could do whatever he wanted. And he decided to be fatherless. This is why it tells us to take care of the widows and the orphans. Back in that culture, if you didn't have a father, now don't send me emails. The men were the ones that made the money. The men were the ones that took care of the family. They fed the family. All of a sudden, you had nothing. 
The parable of the widow with the jars of oil. He told the boys, go get all the jars, fill them up. It just kept, God was blessing them. They didn't have anything. They had no means of, of any kind of income. For, for somebody to be fatherless, you were poor. You were junk. That kid took everything from his father, everything he ever wanted, went off and squandered it and chose to be fatherless. And God's watching this. Wouldn't you be? This is what parents do. And they want them to come back. They really do. Just come back. And you know, we, we raise our children in the church. I'm going to turn this into a church story. We, we raise our children in the church. And, and I'm no different than probably a lot of you. I got to the age where I didn't have to go to church anymore. And I ran wild. <laughs> and all my mother wanted me to do was come back to church. And I didn't. And she's, she's disappointed. She's watching me. She saw what I was doing. My, my dad, I don't think he cared so much. But my mother, good, deep-rooted Christian. I left the church. And I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Anybody can relate to that? Oh, no, you're all good. All's the father wanted was for his boy to come back. And we do that too. Sometimes we just want him to come the first time. There's, there's a lady in this building today that all she wanted was for her boy to go to church. Anybody else like that? Finally it happens. Let's party. Let's do this. This is the story of the prodigal son. Prodigal. The dad's watching. And the son comes home. Most of you were probably here for a message I did oh, a couple years ago. How the culture, here I am again, I'm a culture bomb guy. It says that the father ran when he saw him. And I'll, I'll give you a quick summary of this. For a Jewish man in that culture to run was disgusting. You didn't run. You just didn't do it. So for the father to run, it says he ran to his son, would have been huge. Everybody was like, what is going on? He's actually pulling away some of the disgrace from the boy coming into town. He's taking it away from the son and putting it on him, drawing attention to himself, he's running. Oh, my God. No, he can't be running. Yeah, he did. And, of course, the garments that they had, right? Now, you ladies run in dresses. You know how you, you grab them and hike them up a little bit? <laughs> Am I wrong? Right? You, you're going to run in a dress, right? I shouldn't call it a dress. You know what they, the garments there. So he grabs it and he pulls it up. Do you know how disgusting it was for a Jewish man to show his legs? Now he has showed his legs, and he's running. He's pulling all the shame and all the guilt away from his son who's walking into town with nothing, absolutely nothing. He's taking all the shame away from him, putting it on himself. Because what would have happened when he came crawling back to town? I'll use the word crawl. He didn't even have any feet, um, sandals on his feet. That's a whole nother story. He was, he was bad. He'd squandered everything. He was working on a pig farm. It was bad back in those days. This was not a, a career that he had, would have chosen. Everything was gone. The father hikes up his dress. We'll cut that part out. Hikes up whatever you call this thing that he's wearing. He shows his legs. He takes off running for his son, and it would have been a disgrace. But what he was trying to do was save him from the ceremony that would have happened in the town to oust him from the community. You didn't do that. You didn't come back. When you left, let's call it the church, you didn't come back. You were done. You were a disgrace. You took your father's inheritance and you left. Don't you ever come back here again. And the boy came back. And the father was happy. Wouldn't you be? Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe, maybe you have a child that has bailed on you. Now I'm going to change the lingo. See, I'm trying to put it in a culture that you'll understand. You got a child that bailed on you. And you know what? Okay, whatever. He's done. He's out. 
but there's part of you that just wants him to do this and he can come home. If he would just do that, all this is all I want, and then you can come home. We want our children to come home. We want love. He took the shame for his boy, drew it to himself to stop the town from getting to the sun. That's still not the point of this message, but it's a good one. I got, I got like 20 slides that I'm not even going to put up. Just going to talk to you. Let's get to the part where I'm on this kick about the church. The other son, I call him the prodigal son's brother. He's a piece of work. And now, see, I'm just going to get your mind set here. He got his money, too. He didn't go anywhere, but he still would have had everything he ever wanted. Now, picture this this other brother living with his parents. I don't know about the mom, but doesn't talk about the mom, but let's say that she was there somewhere. He would have had everything he ever wanted. They had servants. He'd already gotten his inheritance. He had it made. I'm going to read you part of this and what happens. He... He hears the music. He hears all the excitement going on in the house. And he's like, what? What's going on? And he calls his servants. So they have servants. This guy's got a maid. Not that I want them. <laughs> Unless I need a Kleenex or something. Yeah. If it was out, I would have made you go get one. So he hears this party going on, right? And he gets his servant and says, what, what's going on? And, and they tell him that, hey, your brother has come back. The, you know, the guy that took off on you? You know, took your dad's money and, and left town? Now the older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. Sweet. So he called one of the servants and asked, what it meant, what was going on. And he said, your brother has come home. And because he has received, because he was received, the sound you hear is the party. And they have slaughtered a fattened calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. And so he answered and said to his father, Look, these many years I have served you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat. This would have been the celebration meet. That I might make merry with my friends. Now, you got to think about this. I'm going to stop here for a minute. He had his half of the inheritance. He had servants. He could have had a young goat and a party any time he wanted Right? He had everything. But as soon as the son of yours came home, who was devoured and took his livelihood with harlots. That's where I got that word. I'll fill you in on it later. You killed the fattened calf for him. Okay, so the other brother, I better choose the right word here, was mad. He wouldn't even go in the house to the party. The, the, the brother that ran off comes home. Dad's happy. Get the calf. Get a robe. They put a ring on his finger. We're going to celebrate. My son that was lost is now found. And we are going to party. How many of you, probably none, right, are the brother? You want what you want. You come to church. And who cares? Whether somebody that came in off of the street, squandered everything, comes in here and says, I have found Jesus. Whoa, dupe. We're just here because of the 99 click. This is the other brother. This is the church. 
This is what the majority of Christians act like. They are not really happy for the one that they found. They're not happy that the father's son comes back and the church is throwing a party. Now, I'll throw myself under the bus here for just a second, and you probably, some of you will probably be mad. Your, your mother couldn't understand this. If somebody new comes to Simply Free Church, and they're just trying to check this whole thing out, and they accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, I'm going to give them all the attention they want. I'm sorry if I don't say hi to you that morning, or don't respond to your text right away because I'm spending time with the one. And yet, the brother, he's, he's mad because dad's not paying attention to him. He's got everything he wants. Just like the church, you see, they, they come in and all oh, the pews are just right or chairs or whatever, and this is where I always sit, and, and we come here and we meet the same people. And, and the one that comes in uh, you know, you kind of look at them. I'm not, I'm not talking about you guys. You're all good. <coughs> but the one that comes in, and no, they're, they're sitting in Grandma Smith's chair over there. Dude, what are you going to do about that? I'm going to go over there and hug them. <laughs> right? You don't want them sitting in your chair? I'll have them right up here. You can all tell them why. You see, what the church gets to be the other brother, not all happy when somebody comes home. You know, in fact, you hear, um, what are they doing here? Do you, do you know what they did? I, I got something to tell you about them. That's the other brother. That's the one that is not partying because the lost came home. And that's what we do. I better move on. That's the church. It really is. The majority of the church, and I don't want you to be that way. I'm trying to make you a better church body. We are to reach out and find the lost, to water that seed for a while. And if you're a deep-rooted Christian, and I or others don't give you the attention that you had been getting, and they seem to be spending all their time with the new guy, Oh, got to spend time with the new guy. But what about me? I put a check in the box every week. I bought those chairs. Good for you. I'm spending time with the new guy. Because it was you once. Now, you see, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about God. God is so happy when one sheep is found. When one coin is found, it says that the heavens erupt. What about me? I've been faithful. I've been good to you. All I wanted was for you to put a chair up here so I could sit. And you won't even do that. You're spending time with the new guy. You're the brother. You're the prodigal son's brother. Now, don't get me wrong. Nobody's done that. We don't put chairs up here. Um, There's a story a while back. Church was not growing, not doing very well. So they hired this young pastor to come in and he comes up on the chancel area and says, well, what's that over there? And so, well, that's where the, the chair where the minister sits while he's waiting to start. And those other two chairs are the, uh, the um, elders chairs. And he said, well, get, get rid of those. Let's start with that. They fired him. The 99, the prodigal son's brother. That's what it is. Can you rejoice when the one is found? Can you spend some time with them? Water the seed. That is Christianity. Will the worship team get ready? I'll get to the real point. That's not the point either. (laughs) Yeah, I love this. Here's Here's what I wish you would all be. Put up Luke 15, 21, 24. And the Father, I'm sorry. I'll just start over again. Is it up there now? Okay, good. And the Son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven 
and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. This was the prodigal son coming home. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf here and kill it and us, let us eat and be merry. For the son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found and they began to be merry. You're not thinking about the servants. Leave that slide up for a minute, will you? The servants simply did what the father asked them to do. And they're the ones that are merry. The last line says, and they began to be merry. Some of your versions are going to say they began to party. Right? The prodigal son gets everything he wants and he takes off. And he is miserable. And he comes crawling back home and says, I'm so sorry. He's miserable. The brother, the brother's just plain mad because the father's spending all his time with this this guy that squandered everything when he'd been good. I've been here serving you and I've been faithful and you're not treating me that way. What are you giving up to him for? I was the one that was good. But the servants simply did what the father, the master, asked them to do. They just served the Father, and they are merry. You want to be merry? Do what the Father asks you to do. Don't ask for everything right now. You're going to be miserable. Don't be the one that says, oh, they don't belong here. You should have seen what they did when they were younger. I grew up with them. I can't go to church where they went to church. You're the brother. You're miserable too. But the servants simply did what the father asked, and they were merry. Maybe we should just do what the father asks. Not worry about the prodigal son. Not worry about the brother. Simply serve the master and be merry. They had everything they ever wanted. Why can't we just do that? You know, God is such a good father. If you just stay in his presence and do what he asks you to do, we got got the playbook right here. Do what he asks you to do. You won't have to run off and come crawling back. Now see, we're going to use this lesson for that. And you won't have to be the one that's just whining that the church isn't paying any attention to you, but you're, you're there every week and you're faithful. All I want you to do is put up a slide for my kid. Now, if you ever ask me to do that, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm trying to make a point. Prodigal son is who we're after. I don't want you to be the brother. What I want you to be is the servants. Not to me, not to Simply Free Church, but to the Father, the one God Almighty who took his son and hung him on a cross so that you could come home without disgrace. Can the rest of us wait for that one to walk in or go find him and simply be merry doing what the good father asked us to do? If I haven't had time to have supper with you, I don't don't know why people always want to like have supper with a pastor. I don't don't get it, but as you can see, I'm not lacking and I'm sorry. I'm trying to spend some time to get the one, trying to water that seed a little bit, and you guys should all be happy. Amen. You should be right there with me. Amen. Who needs what this week? Well, I've been meeting with this young man. I, I know he's kind of struggling. Let's fix it. And we should party. Amen. Right? Trying to make you a better church body by realizing what the church is supposed to do, what our function is. Meet your needs. But you were lost once too. And if you were found and nobody partied, nobody slaughtered the fattened goat for you, nobody brought you a robe and brought you a ring because you were too busy talking to the 99, you were at the wrong church. This should be a celebration. 
Will you join me in this mission to reach those that are lost, maybe have wandered away? How about the one that comes in? I don't care what your past is. You are a new creation. Your past will be revealed to somebody in a testimony, not in gossip. You will be welcomed and you will be loved. You will get a card from my wife. <laughs> oh, I said, you all know that, don't you? Right? Handwritten. Bible verse just for you. I can't get her to go to bed at night. She's got to find the right verse. And then you come up to me and say, thanks for the card. It's just exactly what I needed. <laughs> I don't got a clue. You're welcome. <laughs> Somebody's watering the seed. It wasn't me. Now you see, I got to make sure that I'm not the prodigal son's brother in telling my wife, hey, put the cards down. I want a roast. You see how this can work in your family? Come on. Spill it, you guys. Sometimes you need to take the time for the one. Sometimes you need to take the time for the lost. There's time for the guys that are the 99 click. We all get together at the right time. But I hope when we do, we all go after the one. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for, for trying to guide us and steer us. We know what we're supposed to do. But sometimes you answer our prayers and we kind of wander off. God just calls us back home. Let each and every person recommit their life to your son right now. And the purpose of his church, the function of his church, to reach the lost. God, I hope we're doing it right. If we're not, make the lights go off right now. Okay, we're good. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. If the lights had went off... I would have blamed it on somebody else and justified. I just justify everything. That was the devil. That was the devil. Leave this place and be the church. Function as the church body. It's easy in here. Out there, we're supposed to be after the one, showing them love, showing them mercy, and forgiving them. They are a new creation just like you. Have a good week.